Hello, welcome once again to Lato's Law. I'm Steve Lato. Today we're going to talk about the lawsuit that has followed in the admission and cheating scandal I talked about a couple days ago. And since I do sue people for fun, I thought I'd talk about the lawsuit that was just filed. Uh, late breaking news, but a class action lawsuit has been filed, at least a lawsuit seeking class action certification. Uh, and one of the people behind it is Lauren Fidelic, who, when she was in high school, had a 4.0 GPA and a stellar 34 on her ACT. She applied to the University of Southern California and UCLA and was not accepted. So she and her mother are now among seven students and parents who filed a federal lawsuit uh, against USC, UCLA, and the other colleges named in this week's sprawling admissions scandal, saying their admissions process was warped and rigged by fraud. Uh, I'm getting this from CNN, but it's been widely reported elsewhere. Prosecutors revealed Tuesday that 50 people, including 33 parents, and a number of college coaches faced charges in carrying out a scheme in which wealthy people used their money to game the admission system at some of the nation's elite universities. Uh, the plaintiffs allege in their lawsuit that that resulted in negligence, unfair competition, and violations of consumer law. Uh, and the lawsuit was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California. Uh, Fidelic is a student now at Tulane. She's joined in the lawsuit by a Stanford University student named Kalea Woods and other people. The lawsuit names Stanford, UCLA, USC, the University of San Diego, University of Texas at Austin, and Wake Forest, Yale, and Georgetown. Now, I had several people comment to me on my most recent video on this that, uh, you know, these schools can do whatever they want. They're private institutions. Well, number one, not all of them are private. And number two, they still have to follow the law. And when they advertise and say, here's how you get into our school, and, you know, everything is above board, uh, if that's not how things actually are, then it turns out that laws will cover what they do, even though they're private institutions. So um, CNN has reached out the university's name for comment in the lawsuit, haven't gotten any yet. And the students and parents in the lawsuit said they spent money to apply to schools named in the college admissions scandal, and they wouldn't have applied had they known of the scheme. So here's the thing. What they're actually looking for is they want, well, compensatory and punitive damages, but restitution and other relief deemed proper by the court. They're basically saying, as part of the lawsuit, we paid money as part of an admissions process. There's an application and admissions fee. You pay this fee just to have them look at your thing and say, yes or no, you you get in or you don't. Would you have applied and paid a fee if they said, by the way, it's not actually how you get into school. You can also get into school by bribing somebody. And presumably, the people who are bribing somebody couldn't have gotten in the normal way. So that bribe person is going to be taking a seat that could go to you otherwise. So you might be displaced in the proper process by somebody who's going outside the process. Would you apply to that school? (laughs) They're arguing and saying they wouldn't have. Um, The students who filed the complaint, according to their attorney, didn't receive what they paid for to participate in an application process free of fraud. This is a straightforward claim and a simple remedy. The students want their money back. They request that anyone who paid an application fee to any of the eight named universities but was denied admission should get their application fee returned. And this is a simple argument. I mean, seriously, you paid the money and you didn't get what you paid for. You weren't paying to get into the school because everyone knows not everyone who applies gets in. You were paying for them to consider your application and let you in if appropriate, okay? And underlying that is the idea that they have some process that's fair, I mean, they don't just take the applications and throw them down the stairs and the ones that fall the farthest get in. You know, there, there's some process whereby they look at what you did and weigh it. Many of these universities actually say things like, our average incoming freshman class has this grade point average and it has, you know, this ACT score average. And what does any of that mean if you can ace these things and not get in because some rich person's kid gets in because they cheated? So I, I, I understand that argument and I think it's a good argument. According to the lawsuit, Bendis was not accepted to UCLA, and Bendis is one of the uh, plaintiffs, uh, also not admitted to Stanford or the University of San Diego, and another plaintiff was rejected by Texas and Stanford. Uh, Now, here's the thing. On Tuesday, the man at the center of the scheme pleaded guilty to racketeering, money laundering conspiracy, conspiracy to defraud the United States, and obstruction of justice in federal court. Uh, He also ran a nonprofit as well as a counseling firm that would help people get in. And the allegation is that if you contacted his consulting firm and said, my kid needs to get into school, and you realize you haven't got the grades and you haven't got test scores, but you got lots and lots of money, he would let you know that, well, you know something, there's another way we can do this. 
We can fake your test scores. We can lie about some other things. We can bribe some people and we can sneak them in and they'll get in. And um, turns out that's wrong. So the uh, prosecutors have said that universities right now are considered victims in the criminal case. Uh, and the schools have made similar assertions. Um, but, you know, here's the interesting thing. U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling did say, for every student admitted through fraud, an honest, genuinely talented student was rejected. Uh, in particular, court documents deta- detail how the Stanford sailing coach agreed to designate a, pr- a, sp- a prospective student as a recruited sailor, facilitating the student's admission to Stanford in exchange for a bribe. Singer sent uh, $110,000 to the Stanford sailing program for one student and $160,000 to the program for another student. Neither student ended up attending Stanford, though. Uh, and the sailing coach uh, pled guilty. Um, so there's something going on here. I don't know quite how to explain some of that, but Stanford said it has been cooperating with the Justice Department in this case and that the coach has been fired. So they say they've done nothing wrong, but the question is, did they benefit? Even if they did nothing wrong, you know, there's, there's an idea of unjust enrichment. You know, do we let you keep money that you got wrongfully, even if it wasn't your wrongdoing? So here's the thing. This lawsuit talks about getting a refund of the application fees. And to me, that makes complete sense. But the other thing about this is that some of these people who are suing are suing because they are now saying that they did get into these schools. But the problem is that upon graduation, their degrees from Stanford, for instance, will be worth less because prospective employers may now question whether these people were admitted to the university on their own merits versus having parents who are willing to bribe school officials. And that's the thing. If you are a a student at Stanford right now, and you graduate, and you mention to somebody, I went to Stanford, the first thing people are going to think of is like, oh, the cheating scandal. Like, that's going to be associated right there. Stanford cheating scandal. UCLA cheating scandal. And so people are going to make that association in their heads. So I've talked before about how to recover money in a lawsuit. You need to show liability. That is that somebody did something that, that harmed you in a way that the law allows for compensation to take place. Okay? It could be negligence, could be breach of contract, but somehow somebody did something that harmed you. But you also need to be able to point to the harm and say this harm is a discrete and concrete harm. I've been harmed in a way that we can look at and say, yes, that's harm. And one of the things that we need to do as, a, as people in court is be able to quantify that harm in the form of dollars. I've mentioned this before. Courts can only award you money for the most part. So if you've been harmed, a jury's asked, how much do you give this person for the harm that they've had? And so they're asked to compensate somebody for harm. So if I paid, you know, $300 to apply to a school and they didn't consider my application fairly because it wasn't associated with a $100,000 bribe, um, I think it's very easy to say, yeah, you should get your 300 bucks back. That application fee should come back to you because you didn't get what you bargained for. You were, you were asking for a fair application process. You were asking for someone to look at your application and consider it fairly, okay? You weren't, you weren't saying that the money entitled you to get in. You're saying that you were simply asking for a fair application process. So if you didn't get the fair application process, you should get your money back. I think, that's, I think that's pretty straightforward. I'm not saying that this is going to be a winner in court. It might not be a winner in court. I don't know. But I, I understand that very, very clearly. The bigger problem, though, is if you graduate from one of these schools and every single job you go to, somebody goes, oh, were you there during the time of the cheating scandal? Did you know anybody who did that? Did you do that? Even if you got asked that at every single job interview you went to, how could you quantify that? How would you say, well, here's what that's worth? And I, I'm, I'm concerned that a court is going to look at that and say, you know something, it's one thing to say that the admissions fee, which we can quantify because you paid it with a check that actually is the exact same thing you're asking for return to you. Uh, we can understand that, but how do we quantify this diminished value of your diploma, for instance? You know, does, does it have less value? How much is a diploma worth, you know? And I mean, I understand there's people out there who say, no, 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 we can actually prove this. The average person who graduates from Harvard with a degree in this would tend to make this over their lifetime. Actuarial science has probably looked at this and calculated this out. And I know they've done this. Where they say, you know, a high school diploma over your lifetime is worth this much money. 
and a college diploma is worth this much money. They probably have broken it down by schools and, and, and by, you know, what's, what, what area you studied. But then how would you say, okay, so that diploma is worth, worth this much money over your life. How much will that be diminished by this cheating scandal? By the way, you understand that 20 years from now, the cheating scandal will not be remembered. Okay, there are going to be much more important things between now and then to remember. I don't know what they are yet, but they're going to happen. So, you know, it's going to be very, very hard for them to quantify that. So I see that as the more difficult part of this process. But as far as getting the refunds of the application, the admission, whatever you want to call it, the money you send in with your application to school, um, I can see them getting that back. Uh, but you never know. The other thing is, and this is one of these bigger more philosophical questions, is that I've seen people make the argument before that if you are a student going to college and you're paying money to the college and they're educating you, that you are, in essence, a consumer. You're buying something, and the product you're buying is the education that comes with a diploma. You're not buying a diploma. You're buying the education, and if you do it right, you get a diploma at the end, okay? So you are a consumer, and the product is the education. So I've seen people who've tried to raise arguments on this, and I, and I don't know if I can find a case on this or not, but I don't know that any courts have actually said, but yes, that's a consumer transaction. Consumer transactions are usually thought more in terms of, you know, I hand you money and you hand me these. Now I own these, I bought a, a tangible thing, a product. It's possible you can buy something that's not a product. You can buy a service, for instance. But the idea that you're buying an education, I think is in a step even further down the line of, of things that are not quite as discreet or tangible as other consumer things. So whether or not you can say, yes, I paid the money for an education and the education I got is tainted because the diploma that I now get will have this imaginary check mark next to it for everybody who sees it, who remembers that cheating scandal. I think that might be a big stretch. And by big stretch, I mean it might be something that might not survive summary disposition or summary judgment in the federal court system. Uh, we call it disposition in Michigan, but it's judgment everywhere else. Uh, and so I suspect, if nothing else, I will make you a prediction. Okay, This lawsuit will take a very, very long time to conclude. <laughs> and by that, I mean it's going to go through all kinds of appeals. They might reach a settlement up on appeal. They might go to trial up on appeal. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes to the U.S. Supreme Court. Okay, So this is something... I won't be updating you on this next week, and I won't be giving you the final results a month from now. The final results of this case are going to happen way down the road. So we'll see about that. So that's the story with the lawsuit filed recently involving the college admissions cheating scandal. But I will update you as these things progress. Questions or comments, fire them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye.